Hi, I'm Casey Seiler, Editor-in-Chief of The Times Union. This is a special episode of our podcast, The Eagle, featuring another conversation with Valerie Garmash, who is the editor of a digital uh, news publication in eastern Ukraine called Maya Sends, or Make Sense. As I recently discussed on The Eagle, for the past two years, Times Union staff have been meeting periodically with the staff of Garmash's publication to exchange best practices on things like, well, producing podcasts. We last spoke to him about a month ago, just a couple of days after the Russian invasion of Ukraine had begun, and talked about how he and his staff are trying to keep the people of their city, Slavyansk, informed as the Russian military grinds closer. In this uh, second installment, which was conducted on Friday, April 1st, Garmash speaks about how he and many members of his staff have vacated, cleared out of Slavyansk, and made the uh, somewhat dangerous passage to western Ukraine, where they are continuing to produce Myasens with the help of stringers and staff members who are still on the ground. Valery's team, majority of the team, has relocated to western Ukraine, to Chernivtsi. Uh, we are doing so-so, but there is still part of the team left in Slavyansk. And maybe you heard, like, the latest, uh, you know, this potential agreements between uh, Ukraine and our enemy, that kind of the focus has shifted and the attention has shifted and the rhetorics have shifted to presenting it at the you know, kind of war to uh, keep the Eastern Ukraine and to, uh, you know, to focus on Eastern Ukraine. So Valery says that now, unfortunately, they're expecting escalation and large attacks on on Eastern Ukraine where Slavyansk is, and that's why he's worried how to relocate the other part of the stuff here. Is it your sense from what you heard that it's it's too early to tell how the, the talks might go that if in fact there is a settlement in which you know Russia declares sort of a, a separate state or a rump state in eastern Ukraine, that Slavyansk might be within that area, or is it likely that Slavyansk would would stay part of Ukraine? So we should look at this strategically. It's clear that Russia would aim to take the whole Donetsk and Lugatsk region, and we are 100% sure that our uh, army will stop them, but it the matter where will they stop them. Either it will happen before Slavyansk territory, yeah, the city map, or after Slavyansk. So for now, the Russian forces are 36 kilometers before the Slavyansk, which would be 20 miles. And, uh, mm-hmm. It can change overnight. You know, it can the situation can uh, resolve very quickly. Like we believe in our internal forces in our army, but if they can break through this uh, chain of our armed forces, then they can take Slavyansk. Can you describe for us what your your journey west was like and and when you decided that it, that it was necessary for you and you know the fellow members of, of your staff who did um, make the trip what changed that you decided it was time to to go no it was very simple just two samolets flew and they relocated on uh... March 14th, uh, basically two weeks ago, and before Vitaly saw that they still had those two weeks, you know, to wait till now, that would be the time they would be relocating, uh, and they, he was right, they still had those two weeks because Slavyansk is still, you know, not occupied, it's just very close to the border and to uh, ensure sure that our forces will get away, but uh, on your question on what was the trigger uh, for them to leave, uh, they had two airplanes flying over Slavyansk and shooting uh, in including civilian objects and uh, for team and for uh, Valeria it was clear that uh, if uh, occupation happens 
they, as the reporters, are the primary target uh, and primary key to basically, uh, you know, to be detained or hurt. And so they took this decision very quickly and they left. To your question, Casey, on how long did it take them to get to uh, Western Ukraine, to Chernovtsi from Slavyansk? So it took them two days um, and they had to, to make a, a trip, like an overnight stay, a mid trip. And then it took long because there are a lot of blog posts, the check-in points on the road just for the security reasons, a lot of Ukrainian checkpoints and passes through all of them requires time. You have to stop, show documents and that's so the length is about 1,000 kilometers, which is in under normal, regular and peaceful life conditions. One could leave uh, with the car early in the morning and, you know, by late this, the same day, you would be there, you know, still in PM. Uh, but considering, again, all the uh, traffic jams, because uh, that's a very busy route now, Western Ukraine, you can imagine, and, and the checkpoints that took two days. In our conversations, we talk a lot about the challenges of digital journalism and the, you know, the challenges to the business model. But one definite advantage is the fact that when you're producing a digital product, you do not have to necessarily be in your zone of coverage to produce it. But being that distant or for part of your staff to be that distant from your community I, I would imagine that's a, a very different type of editing task. Yes, that is correct. It changed the reporting, but uh, uh, not, in my sense, they have a very wide network of fixers, basically those of uh, friends and uh, you know, acquaintances that can uh, provide them photos, that can tell them what's going on in the city, and they send news pieces daily, information, you know, with visuals. They are more in secure position because they are not official reporters and they would not uh, bring, you know, attention to just common civilians. So uh, Valeria says that's just our new approach to work. It's now the question of security, whether it is uh, more secure for us to stay there and report or we, we just shift to this type of work, which, uh, you know, does not hinder any of our online reporting materials and skills with to have this fixers network. How much population would you say Slavyansk has lost over the course of the last month? So if we talk about uh, 180,000 uh, 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 citizens here in Slavyansk, and uh, that's according to official resources, and Valeria says it was about 115,000, and he thinks that um, approximately 50%, uh, 55% they have left already. So it's about 56 to that state in Slavyansk, and that those who left are about the same. We are hearing a lot of reports in this country, a lot of intelligence reports that Vladimir Putin is getting bad information from his military, which is not surprising for um, an autocracy where people want to tell the boss what he wants to hear. From what you've seen on your trip west and from what you have heard from your sources on the ground or from sources within the government or the military, I mean, how would you describe how the war is going for Ukraine? Yes, this is uh, uh, already known at the fact that he was uh, misinformed or you know, not even misinformed, but just on the purpose, as you say, in case that uh, his uh, closed circle was informed him only with the things that he wanted to hear. So uh, otherwise he would have this blitzkrieg in three days, as and everything you probably read and heard about that, uh, and uh, the tactics of attack that would be completely different if he started the situation and if his military did start the uh, Ukraine uh, situation more closely. There is just one thing that he could never kind of put into attention and could never predict it. So you can predict the number of tanks, you can predict the number of armed forces, the soldiers, but you could never predict how united the nation would be. And that's what our people are doing now. He could never predict that everyone would be so heroic to defend their land, their families, their property, uh, just everything like on what, what they live in. That's why it failed.
Like this is this is the main part of the equations that you like one you know no surveillance no secret forces can can ever predict. Larry, I really appreciate your taking the time to talk to us. Is there anything I'm not asking that you wanna that you wanna share? Well, yes, thank you, Casey. Two important things. First, uh, uh, now there is a wide coverage of uh, uh, situation on the ground by international media, probably from majority of the country. So it's very important to to use proper wording and not to call it uh, armed conflict or you know some kind of conflict. But it's a prop. It's a real war, and it should be called like that. And another very important message, and we heard it from our reporters at one other meeting we did with Colorado. Uh, newsrooms too uh, last week is that uh, it's very important for yes reporters to follow the sanctions and to follow how your American companies are following the sanctions list because for example today we heard that Microsoft would partially stay in Russia and uh, uh, it probably should be covered in the media and highlighted and people should realize that every dollar that American taxpayers would pay to Russian company or to company that is working in Russia, it will result in a rocket flying from Russia to civilians in Ukraine. So if uh, US reporters can follow the sanctions and can, can highlight how well the companies are, you know, really staying off Russia, that would be very helpful and that would help Ukraine to win. Larry, thanks so much for taking the time. I'm very glad to see that you are safely safe, and I wish you and your staff all the all the best. We will be safe. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm Casey Seiler, editor of the Times Union. You've been listening to our conversation on Friday, April 1st, with Valery Garmash, the editor of Maya Sense or Make Sense in Eastern Ukraine. We'll continue to check in with our colleagues in Ukraine as the war continues. Tune in next week for another episode of The Eagle, a Times Union podcast. If you're enjoying this podcast, take advantage of all the Times Union has to offer and support our efforts to bring in you award-winning journalism by becoming a Times Union member today. Go to timesunion.com slash subscribe.